Hello, welcome back to Season 2 of Operation Lathe here in Kerbal Space Program. I uh, did a couple missions last time, just some basic stuff. I have a little bit more science to work with, so what I want to do is see what see what else we can get here. Okay, so now we have the radio decoupler in here. I think it was over there before. Maybe not. I'm confused. Uh, definitely want that. This is kind of secondary. Let's uh, let's go ahead and grab that. See what we get. We got some more radio decoupler struts. Very useful things there. Uh, it's a bunch of control stuff in here. More parachutes, little engines. Okay, this is looking reasonably familiar so far. You know what? Maybe I'll do the small engines and parachutes first. And then we can get more science apparati, apparatuses, whatever. Hmm. Okay. Let's, uh, let's. Oh, yeah. Wow, we got a lot of missions to choose from now. Uh, well, please make a selection. Oh, wow. Okay, so we got a lot of test. We got a lot of test ones to do here. So, this is a test of uh, the liquid engine at medium altitude. Oh, here's an easy one. Landed at Kerbin. <laughs> uh, radial mounted parachute in flight over Kerbin. See, I don't want to just start grabbing these because these do expire. Uh, Rockle Max Solid Fuel Booster. Which one is that? I wonder, is that the little one or the big one? Huh. Land, I can't land it at Kerbin. That's kind of an oddball one. Yeah, a lot of, mm -hmm. lot of tests mm -hmm. they want us to do. It's not super interesting to me, but I, let's do... Let's do like one of these or something. One of these that's a little bit uh, more interesting, maybe. Landed at Kerbin, not super interesting. Yeah, that, a separatron, we want us to do a separation. Activate the part through the staging sequence when all test conditions are met. So they want us to do this. And this should be more or less in our normal launch profile. So why don't I take that one? That should be... <coughs> which part is it? I guess it's the... Oh, the Separatron. Oh, okay, so that's the little booster rocket things. Okay. Yeah, let's take that one. Oh, yeah. And then we will... I don't think I'll pass on these for the moment. Uh, stack to coupler. Splash down. Eh. Uh -huh. Just a radio decoupler on a suborbital trajectory. Interesting. So we need to be in space, but in a suborbital. <laughs> eh, interesting. And you got to be at a fairly specific altitude also. Wow. Yeah, some of those look like they'd be kind of a pain. Although, look at how much uh, prestige you get. And you get science for those, too. That's kind of nice. <laughs> Although, I think we're going to go for directly for orbit. Look at the, look at the payoff for that. 59,000. We got a pretty good advance too, although it's going to cost us if we don't make it. Uh, shouldn't be shouldn't be a problem for making it though. Uh, Thirty science is a nice bonus too, so let's just accept oh, yeah. that one. So we got a separatron test and a orbital mission requirement. All right, so let's just throw this together. There's our separatron. We get it's blue because we get them for for free, I guess. Or well, maybe not free, but it's experimental, so we're getting them only so we can complete that mission. All right, back to standard staging procedures. How expensive are those? Four. That's four hundred seems like kind of a lot for a separatron, but whatever. You know what, I think I'm going to, again, stick to this and just land this whole thing. We're going for orbit. We'll have a small orbital vehicle. I got this little engine now, so I can just do that. Seems like a thing to do. Get these staged appropriately. Okay, so, okay, so, oh, hey, look, this is a history. That's what it is. Okay. 
Um, how do I dismiss those messages? Oh, I guess right click on them, they go away. Okay, now we know. All right, it says we have to stage the Separatron at that altitude, but we don't necessarily need to use it for ejecting something. So I think I can just stick it on anywhere and light it. Maybe that's the way to do that. Hmm, I think that's the plan I'm going to go with. Um... All right, this will be our orbital engine. Is this? That's not much less expensive. It seems like that should be a lot less expensive than the T30 engine, as it is significantly smaller. But whatever. <laughs> uh, what was I doing? Okay, there we go. Oh nope, nope. Bad, bad, bad Wolverine. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the most logical arrangement of things, but whatever, we're going for it. Same sort of deal as last time. Do triple symmetry, we're a little bit heavier on the payload this time. Actually, it's probably not that much different now that I'm thinking about it. But in any case, funds are not really a problem right now, so that's 14,000. And our current contract awards, it's not telling us what it's going to give us. Uh, that orbital one was good, though, as I recall, so it should be okay. Should be okay. Uh, now then, what I want to do, what I want to do is grab those separatrons, and I will just grab like two of these, and I'll just put them up. I'll just put them on up here. Why the hell not? That way I can recover them, get the cash back for them, also. And then what I'll do is I'll just put them in their own little stage. Let's see, it wants some fire around 20,000 meters, so I expect that we might have ditched this stage by then, so I'm going to put it, uh, let, me, let me fix this while I'm here, I ex I'll put it after this engine, and if all else fails and we're getting to that and we're still burning this lower stage, I can grab it in flight, drag it down, and activate them that way, and I see, I've actually got them facing in the direction of flight, so we can actually use them for just a little bit of extra lift as well. Alright, so yeah, let's go with that, and let's keep an eye on Jeb. Did he try to jump in the cockpit? You did! Bad Jeb! Get out! Somebody else's turn. Let's send, uh, let's send Philo with his zero courage but maximum stupidity. Let's see how he handles space flight. All right, let's get some science. I am going to remember. Whoops, I I done forgot something. I guess I don't really need to transmit back, but I want to be in the habit of putting a transmitter on. Oh, you know what? You know what? Since we are going for orbital. I'm going to go ahead and slap on a pair of mystery goos so we can get some additional science from that. I can do one in like high atmosphere or something and then one in orbit. Okay, so that's that's a thing. We'll try to get some get some good science out of this mission. I want to unlock some of the tree. All right, SAS on. Oh, Jebediah snuck into the cockpit again. Get out of there, you rascal. <laughs> he really wants to go to space. He really wants to go to orbit for the first time. All right, but that will be uh, Philo's, Philo's opportunity instead. All right, SAS on. We'll stick it half throttle where it's got us. Um, I don't really need that to keep track of my resources. I'll have to see the fuel over here. I do, I do want this to help me track when... I have to keep an eye on my speed and altitude at the same time. That's going to be a little bit interesting, but we've got nothing but liquid engines, so we should be able to do that. And without further ado, three, two, one, lift off. Okay, maybe I didn't need this many engines. Well, we'll see, I guess. I just want to. I'll just have to keep an eye on the speed. Although 380 to 580 is about should be about where we end up in the middle atmosphere, because that's kind of like right right in here somewhere, if you're looking at the 
atmospheric gauge. So that should give us the opportunity to test the Zeppelotrons in about the right speed and altitude. All right, this rocket is uh, drifting a little bit off center, and that's we don't have gimbling engines or anything yet, so that's part of the problem there. I don't have control fins on here, and I only have this one little SAS module up here trying to control things. So uh, we'll we'll see. Hopefully, this will be controllable. But then again, I don't need to get into any particular orbit. I'm just trying to get into some orbit. It would be nice to stay towards the 90 there, Philo, and uh, take maximum advantage of Kerbin's rotation in terms of giving us a boost to orbit. Alright, come on. Fuel situation is a little troubling. I'm not sure I like the font change on the text. It seems like kind of a picky thing, but it's it's not so much the font, it's that it's smaller than it used to be. At least it looks smaller to me. Maybe it's just a optical illusion based on the text, but it, it, it's, it seems harder to read. And I, I really want all the data at a glance. I don't really want to have to... Oh, actually, I, I don't want to be going too fast here. <laughs> we are almost at the test altitude. So I'm going to move those down. All right, commence test! We have tested the Separatrons. Whoa, whoa, and whoa. Okay, now full throttle to make for orbit. Farewell. Hopefully this uh, little LV-909 is going to be capable of getting us out. Kind of, uh, that, that test run kind of messed up my launch profile a little bit. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what kind of orbit we can get into but while we're in it atmosphere. I'm going to observe the mystery goo. Goo seems to be getting very cold now in the upper atmosphere. Yes, yes, that would be a thing that it would do. We will take a crew report where we find no useful or exciting text of any kind, unfortunately. Okay, oh, we've got our altitude. Actually, we can start to uh, build, up, build up some velocity, which hopefully we can do should be using fuel rather sparingly. Okay, this is gradually, <laughs> gradually working. Let's do a little bit of uh, physical time warp. Physics warp, I believe they call it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's uh, a little touchy to try to control things in physical time warping. Uh, but whatever, whatever. Okay, I'm just trying to keep this from getting too, too high and make it too hard to get back or something. A um, little concerned about the fuel. I hope we're going to make orbit on this run. Uh, well, we're in space. I guess I can do the mystery goo in this container. It's clumped into a sphere. It also appears to be brittle. Okay, whatever. All right, well, how's our how's our situation? You know what? The maneuver node is a little bit silly at this point. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, I'm still in the time warp. That's why. Holy cow! I was wondering what the heck was going on there. All right, just have to make sure our fuel doesn't run out. This uh. With this little bit of weight at the end of the rocket, we should be able to get into orbit fairly readily, I say. Yeah! Achieve orbit! We have achieved orbit. Yeah! Alright. Cool, cool, cool. Alright. So we're going to review the report. I'll go ahead and transmit the crew report from the upper atmosphere. So that... Okay, contract's complete. Very nice so that I can get another crew report. We are very much in space right now. The sky seems to be mostly below us. All right, very, very cool. We have success. And we'll do a burn about there. Probably maneuver nodes are overkill for this. The coming back. 
but we will use them regardless since we have them. And bring our butts back down to Kerbin for more science and more contract completions and see what all we can accomplish. See what we can accomplish with just this one little rocket. Should get us a fair bit of science, actually. That orbital one, just in and of itself, was 30 science. You see, we're already at 41 What with what we've transmitted and what with the, uh, the bonus for the mission for making orbit. So, uh, already looking pretty good. Already looking pretty good. And I'm not going to really follow this maneuver node super precisely. I just kind of wanted to get an idea what the trajectory would look like. So go ahead and we'll turn that way. Let's just keep an eye on the resources. The electric charge is almost gone. Because this engine doesn't recharge it even. <laughs> the only reason I care about that is because that's what provides our SAS torque. And a good part of our rotation control, our attitude control, relies on electricity. There's only so much uh, spinning around that Philo can do in the... Uh, compartment <laughs> to uh, try to turn the rocket. Alright, so we're on return trajectory. Very good. We have our science on board. We did our Separatron test. We are looking good. Looking good. Alright, let's get some time warp going on. Because we have been through this. We have been through this returning to Kerbin many times. At least in an alternate universe that is not the version point two four universe. <laughs> and we are going to hope oh I should have taken an EVA report. Oh well. Not uh we're not ready for EVAs yet. We do not have the knowledge or something. Oh wow, okay. I was hoping to land a little closer, but I guess it doesn't really matter. I do wonder I I heard some people talking about it. I don't know if it's actually true or not. Where if you the closer you are to Kerbal Space Center, when you recover the rocket, the more funds you get back. I'm not sure if that's true. We might have to uh, do some experiments to figure out if that's the case. Um, it would make some sense that you're easier to recover. You get more of the cash back. I mean, but I'm not sure if that's the most logical of things. Although it would make it uh, make you shoot for precision landings near the Kerbal Space Center. <laughs> Which would be kind of an interesting challenge to set. Woo! The parachute seems giant for this little tiny thing. But uh, it does the job. If it does the job. Oh, it seems like we're still coming down with some speed. I guess we've got weight left over. We're still carrying a, about half of our fuel from this last tank. But we'll, a uh, little bit of a burn, slow ourselves down. I don't want to destroy, I really don't want to destroy my mystery goo containers, that would be a real shame. So we'd lose a fair bit of science from that. Okay, good. We have recovered it safely. Whoa, and the rocket tipped over. Okay. <laughs> we are at stable two. KSC, please send a recovery vessel. Alright, good stuff, good stuff. Four experiments recovered. Got a vessel back from orbit, so 10 for that. So we got 32 just from the equipment, plus that we got for the depart test, the contract, which was a lot, a lot of cash, and 30 science for orbiting Kerbin, and also 6 science and a good amount of cash and reputation for the Separatron test. They got good data, apparently. Success. And we did recover... Eh, that's hard to tell. Is that more or less? I'll have to check the replays to see if that's more or less text than before. Or text. More or less money. More Kerbals. Ah, we seem to have got it all back. Eh, whatever. And of course we recovered Philo. All right, let's see, what can we get now? We have 73.5 science. We can get more instruments. And if we continue this way, that's probably still where the solar panels live. So that might be a good thing. I would, I really do want to get struts. Let me see, if I get this, do I get fuel lines over here too? Oh, the fuel lines must be higher up. That's kind of annoying. 
I I really do like those <laughs> those little fuel lines. They can do all kinds of cool staging and efficiency improvements with stuff like that. Okay, so that's 45 science. Okay, we're only going to be able to get one thing out of this next row, so have to choose carefully. I think we'll take the one that gets us the science junior and lets us do a little bit more science. And then, yeah, solar panels are up next, so that's going to be another target, although we need 90 science to get it. And these, and that would be kind of nice too, thermometer, another scientific instrument. But secondary to being able to recharge our power in flight, which lets you do a lot more things, lets you transmit a lot more data. So I think that'll be the, the next kind of target, uh, since the fuel lines, and then the struts will be next. And then we'll try to figure out where the fuel lines ended up in the tree. Damn it! It's one of the most important little parts in the game. And I don't have it yet. But we, we do have plenty of cash accumulating, so that money does not appear to be an issue. Though it might take some while piddling around with these little lesser missions in order to build up enough cash to do something like a uh, run to Duna or something like that. So without further oh, doodling around, let's see. Explore the moon. What is... Ooh... Ooh, okay, so this is a couple things. Achieve orbit. Achieve moon. Oh, exceptional prestige. Okay, so we have an archive of things we've done, too. Oh, okay, useful, useful. So experimental engineering wants us. Say, a worried-looking crew from experimental engineering group would be the first to admit that we really have no idea if getting to the moon would be venerable for us. Um, okay. It can't be denied, however, that the way we would frequently see an unintended ignition was a big part of why. Be that as it may, we now need your help. Okay, that made no sense. Explore the moon. Prestige exceptional. Uh, we get for orbit. Oh, well, this is like a multiple different step kind of deal. So could we achieve only part of it and still get the payout? Or do we have to do everything in order to get the payout? I am curious. Why why we have multiple objectives listed with their own payoffs. So maybe if you do this you get part you get this is like a bonus payoff maybe so you get that value and then if you do all of them you get the completion reward. I wonder if that's how it works. Well, we'll find out, I guess. So this wants us to Oh, I'm not sure we're not sure we're ready for this. <laughs> Uh, don't have landing legs, although that doesn't mean we can't land on the moon. It just makes it an awful lot trickier. Uh, so we have to do... Achieve orbit, transmit science back from orbit, or bring it back. We'll have to land on the moon, and we have to transmit or recover scientific data from the surface of the moon. I don't... I don't think I'm ready to jump to that one just yet. I would like to get a few more parts before I do that. Uh, if I really want, I probably could do that now. Uh, but I'd rather not. I'd rather get things like the landing legs and things like that to make it a little easier. And we have a rescue mission. Maybe, no, that's, I think this is, we'll do this, I think, in the next episode. That will be a good one. It's a pretty good payback, too. He's stuck in orbit around Kerbin. We have to rescue him safely. Hmm, that might be a different kind of challenge. Shouldn't be too bad. We can just send up something like that little orbiter we just did. Although, I don't have... Hmm, ah, I don't have an unmanned capsule to stick on the end of it or something. I uh, would have to come up with a new vehicle that had two pods on it or something. So that we can have a pilot and a spot for the recovered crew member. Hmm... I have to think about that one. I'm not sure what that vehicle would look like given the current status, since we only have a single man capsule at this point. So we might be stuck doing mm -hmm. some of these mm -hmm. uh, little test things. Well, all right. Let me think about that one, and we'll come back in the next episode and see what more we can do for money, for prestige, for science. Kerbal Space Center. All right. I am Southern Wolverine. This is. Season 2 of Operation Lathe. Please like the video down below if you enjoyed this. Comment and subscribe. But for now, have a good day.